Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of the Rachel Hollis podcast. I am doing today's episode on audio for my podcast listeners. I'm doing it on YouTube for those of you who would like to see my outfit as I talk through these things. And I'm pumped about this subject because it's one that I have been talking about for years and it continues to evolve as I continue to evolve. And so I think today it's more interesting than it's ever been. And that is my morning routine, specifically how you can build a morning routine as a spiritual practice. If you've been with me for a while, you have heard me talk about how important my morning routine is in my life. I started it oh gosh, probably six or seven years ago as just one thing. It was one thing that I did to try and make my morning feel calmer and that was waking up earlier. And I'll get into that with you in a minute, but waking up earlier was so effective for me and helped me feel so much better and helped my mornings be so much calmer that I started to wonder what else I could add to that time period in the morning that would make the day feel better. So I have added to that and grown that so much over the years and I've talked to you guys about it a ton and I've written about it in the books and I realized recently that my morning routine has become something so much bigger than just a way to start the day. My morning routine has truly become a spiritual practice in my life and it is the most sacred piece of my day, truly. It's the most special thing that I do. It is my greatest form of self-care. And I really want to talk to you guys about how you can build that in your life. Now, a morning routine is great, but the difference between a morning routine and a morning routine as a spiritual practice is pretty drastic. And I think to understand that, we have to first unpack what a spiritual practice is. I remember when I first became friends with my best friend Beans, we were talking about this. She was talking to me about spiritual practice and she said, you know, anything in your life can be a spiritual practice. Making a cup of coffee or, you know, going on a walk or having dinner with your family, all of those can be spiritual practices. And I was so confused by what she meant. I was like, how, what do you mean? And for me, I've learned over the years and I would define a spiritual practice as anything you're doing with intention and with a soul deep connection to what it is that's in front of you. And that looks like being present in the moment, being conscious of why you're making the choices that you're making and really having a grounded connection in the purpose of what's happening, which sounds like very hippie and sort of out there, but I really think that a lot of us do this naturally and we don't think about it. Maybe your spiritual practice has always shown up for you in connection with your faith. Most of us learned that we could have some spiritual connection to God in however that showed up for us as long as it came through the lens and the rules of the faith that we were born into or the faith that was acceptable in the area that we grew up in, whether that was Catholicism, Judaism, Muslim, Christian, however that looked for you, there was spirituality involved in that process, but it came through the lens of the way that you were taught to practice your religion. What I want you to consider today is the idea of spirituality being a connection of your own making. I was just telling, uh, I, have a, I have a young friend in her 20s and I was just telling her the other day that her spiritual connection needs to work for her. Your personal development is supposed to be personal. Your way of showing up in a moment and feeling like it's sacred and grounded has to work for you. I think that people get this really confused or they approach a deeper connection with themselves in a way that works for others. So they see someone meditating for two hours in the morning and they think, man, if I can't be like Jay Shetty, right? If I can't be that way, then I can't have 
any spiritual practice at all. And it's just not true. For some of us, dance could feel spiritual. A walk in nature could feel spiritual. Connecting with your children, laughing with your friends. We all have different things that make us feel connected to something greater than ourselves. So as you consider building a morning routine, let's think of it in terms that are not just about how it can help us be more efficient, though believe me y'all, I have a company to run, we've run multiple brands here, I have four kids, I have a very thriving, busy, joyful life. Believe me when I tell you that a morning practice is just how you set up the most productive, the most efficient, the most traction, like it is how you set yourself up for success. But I'm always looking for opportunity in life where I can marry my ambition with a spiritual connection because I believe both of those things can coexist beautifully. A spiritual practice for you feels like doing something with intention but in a way that makes you feel connected to something greater than yourself. Something greater than yourself can be God, if that's how you phrase it, can be source, can be divine energy, can be a sense of community, a sense of humanity. It doesn't matter. I don't want to tell you how to believe or what to believe, but I do know the feeling of centeredness, that comes in our lives when we attach our actions to something greater. So let's dig in. Let's talk about how you build your morning routine in this way. And remember, we're going to approach it in two ways, having a spiritual connection and making sure that we set ourselves up for a successful day, however that looks for you. Let's start with intuition. Intuition is that gut feeling that you have. Some people call it their knowing. Some people call it the inner voice of wisdom. Some people call it God listening to what she has to tell you. Some people call it just that like feeling in the gut that tells them if something is right or wrong. And I want us to start with intuition because frankly, I want us as a community of predominantly women listening to this podcast to really trust our gut more, to learn to listen to ourselves, to learn to listen to that still small voice inside of us that tells us that something is right, that tells us that something is off, that tells us that we are out of alignment. So start with intuition in asking yourself, what is it that you need in this season to set you up for the day? What is something that you can create inside of your morning routine that is really going to help you in this season? I say this season because life looks like different things at different times. My youngest is four. So there's a specific pattern of the morning that I follow based on the fact that my youngest child is four years old. My best friend Rosie has a six week old baby. Her morning routine is, might happen at 2 p.m. because that's when she can sort of get her intention together because she's not sleeping and the baby's so little. And depending on the season of life that you're in, depending on the job that you have, this is gonna show up for you in different ways. And using your intuition says, I'm going to let my inner knowing guide me into the direction of what I need right now. Because it's highly possible that what works for someone on Instagram or what works for me, if you're watching this on YouTube, or what works for, you know, Joe Rogan is not going to be effective for you in the place you find yourself right now. A way that I always can tap into what I need and feel and want is through journaling. You know, I always have a, a, I always have a, notebook with me and this is different than my start today journal for those of you who use start today journal start today journal has prompts but i always have a notebook that's just blank pages 
that's just an opportunity for me to journal about whatever I'm thinking of or to sketch out ideas or, you know, for my podcast today, I've written it all down in here. This is always with me. And I find it really powerful to help me unpack what I need. So if I was approaching this and I wanted to do it intuitively, I would just ask myself, okay, what does the season feel like? Do I need more energy in the morning? Okay, well then I'm probably going to do something that generates energy in the morning, like getting movement in. Do I need to feel more peaceful in the morning? Am I waking up and feeling anxious? Okay, well, so I need to do some things that are going to make me feel more peaceful. If I approach this process by what I need, not just what other people tell me to do, it's going to feel so much better. So let's start with intuition. Let's start by unpacking what the season is going to feel like to you. And I typically, when I think of a season, I'm usually thinking quarterly. Uh, you know, if you're listening to this in real time, then we are about to start the last 90 days of the year. And P.S., I hope that you are involved in our last 90 days challenge. If you have never done last 90 days challenge with us before, oh my gosh, please check it out. I'm gonna put a link in the show notes. You can do it totally for free. The idea is that we are setting our intention and we are committing as a community of people to finish the year strong. See, most of the time at this time of year, we start to tell ourselves that it's the holidays. If you can't see me right now, I'm doing air quotes. We're like, oh, but it's the holidays. It's the holidays. So I'm gonna drink more than I should, or I'm gonna eat foods that are gonna make me feel like crap, or I'm gonna stay up later. I'm gonna not get the rest that I need. I'm gonna kind of pull my foot off the gas pedal. I'm gonna start slowing down. And we give ourselves the excuse that it'll be okay because we can start again on January 1st. I don't know if any of you are doing that right now, but we're like, oh, it's okay. New Year's is coming and I'll make a new intention at the new year. But what happens is that you end the year way lower than you should. So you're actually on New Year's Day, you're, you're really just trying to get back to where you were in like July. You're not even making traction. You're actually just trying to get back to even. So what would happen in your life if you were like, no, I'm going to finish the year strong. I'm going to ramp up. I'm going to challenge myself. I'm going to stay focused and I'm going to have fun. I'm going to enjoy the holidays, but I'm going to do it with the intention that I'm not going to break promises to myself in this season. That's what last 90 days challenge is all about. It's so much fun. It's so incredible. We see the most drastic, amazing, amazing changes in our community. Check out the link in show notes. You can go over to the hollisco.com forward slash last 90. That's last nine zero. Jump in for free or you can get the elevated experience in the app, which has like video tutorials and the ability to track your 90 day challenge and do it in a group. And like, I'm going to stop talking about it, but it really is such a special thing. And I want you to join in. It's free. Like, why wouldn't you do this? It's free. Challenge yourself to love yourself well in the last three months of the year. One of the pieces of last 90 days challenge is a commitment to do five things every day. Five things every day, we call it five to thrive. And one of those things is to wake up an hour earlier than you think you need to. Which is why today's podcast is about morning routine. Because it's not enough to wake up an hour earlier. The point is that you wake up an hour earlier and you use that time for self-care. You use the hour for yourself. That's why the spiritual practice component to this comes in. Because it's sometimes the only point in the day where members of this community have the opportunity to love and care for themselves and set their intention. So we started by saying, what do I need in this season? Last three months of the year, what do I need? How, I'm how am I going to show up well? And then the next thing that we're going to challenge you to do, that I'm going to challenge you to do, is to wake up an hour earlier and put the intention into that hour. So I wake up when my kids have school. So it's different on the weekends. But when the kids are at my house, because I split time, half the time they're with their dad, half the time they're with me. When they're at my house, I get up at least 5 a.m., but I'm going to be honest, most of the time my body wakes me up at 4. 
And I actually, this is just a, a really great piece of information, if you can do this at all, allowing your body to wake you up instead of an alarm is amazing. It's so good for you. Here's why. Our bodies have a circadian rhythm. There's a certain amount of time, you can look this up, but there's a certain amount of time that we go through a REM cycle. And oftentimes your body will wake you up naturally. You'll sort of, early in the morning, you'll start to come to awareness. You'll start to sort of be aware that it's morning. And most people will look at their phone or look at the clock and go, oh great, I have 45 more minutes and go back to sleep. The problem is that when you started to become conscious, your body was actually waking you up. So when your body was waking you up, it was ready. It had the rest that it needed and it was ready for you to wake up. But instead, you went back to sleep and you pushed yourself back into a REM cycle that you won't actually have time to finish. So when the alarm goes off, you're gonna wake up in the middle of a cycle that you didn't get to fully go all the way through, which is why you feel groggy. If you wake up when your body tells you that it's time to wake up, that's when we're gonna feel the most energized. So my rule for myself is if I wake up, the alarm is set to 5 a.m., but if I wake up any time in the four o'clock hour, which is usually like four or five, something like that, I just get up. And I know that sounds a little nutty and I'm not telling any of you to do that, but it feels really good for me. And you have to also understand, I cannot stress to you enough how special that morning time is to me. It's dark, the kids are asleep, like I preset my coffee the night before and I get to sit on the couch and I feel cozy and I'm reading my book and I'm doing my journaling, I'm sort of doing all the things. And it's really special practice for me. So it's why my body wakes up is I'm, I'm genuinely excited to get out of bed. I'm excited to start my day because I know that before the chaos of the kids and the busyness of the schedule and needing to be here with y'all and do this podcast and all of that stuff, that I'm gonna have maybe two, sometimes two and a half hours before anybody else is awake for me. You know, this practice started with like 30 minutes early, then an hour, an hour and a half, and I just keep adding time. And yes, in case you're wondering, in order to wake up that early, I have to go to bed early. As soon as my kids are asleep, which is the little guys at nine, somewhere between nine, like four, Noah goes to bed at eight, Ford is in bed at nine, that's when I'm good. And I have this agreement with my older kids. I do a whole sort of bedtime routine with them when it's normal hours because they know the big boys who are 14 and 13, they know mom cannot hang past. Like by 9.30, I'm about to turn into a pumpkin. I'm so tired. So that's sort of how I pull it off. But one of the pieces of Five to Thrive is wake up one hour earlier. We talked about using your intuition. The third thing that I want you to do when you're building a morning routine is start it in a sacred place. So it's really simple. A sacred place can be anywhere in your apartment or your home that feels really good to you. I know some people, the sacred space is getting out and getting to the gym. Some people, the sacred space is outside. For me, it's a very specific seat on my sofa. It's That's it. There's nothing um, extra special or exciting about it. It's just where I've done this practice so many times and it feels really important to me. And I have my books that I'm reading. I have my journal set up there. I set my coffee on the table next to me. I take a few minutes and just sort of sit in that moment and sip my coffee and feel really present and really blessed. And I'll tell you guys, another piece of Five to Thrive, another part of last 90 days is a gratitude practice. And I'll get into that with you in a minute. But gratitude weaves itself through every single piece of my morning routine. It is, it is without question how I live such a joyful life, how I am so resilient, how I stand back up and go again, how I lead my company, how I've navigated through COVID and the trials and tribulations of running a company that specializes in events in a world where you can't have events. like. Gratitude is everything. And I will battle to the death 
over the fact that we can always find things to be grateful for. Always. You are so abundantly blessed. And I know that I have no idea what is going on in your life right now. I don't know if you're sick. I don't know if you're hurting. I don't know if your partner cheated on you. I don't know if you just lost your job. I don't know what is going on, but I promise you, I freaking promise that if you look for it, you can find blessings. And sometimes those blessings feel big. And sometimes those blessings feel like getting to see a butterfly or getting to take a walk or a great cup of coffee Or just the fact that you woke up and you get to listen to this podcast and you're taking a little time to learn and grow today. But gratitude weaves itself through every single part of my morning routine. So I sit in my special spot on the sofa. I have my coffee. I sip it. I'm present. And then I read. Every single morning, the first thing I do as part of my morning routine is I read something that's going to help me grow. And it's usually something I'm interested in, either in terms of health or spirituality, or, you know, it could be I'm reading on Ayurvedic medicine, or I'm reading on manifesting, or the law of attraction, or um, being more empathic, or learning about the world around me, whatever it is, that book in the morning is typically there to help me grow. It's trying to expand sort of the edges of my mind and help me to become a more well-rounded, thoughtful human being. So I'll take some time and I read and then I do a gratitude meditation. Every single morning before I get up from the sofa, gratitude is part of my practice. And I do this in a couple of different ways. The first is I do a guided gratitude meditation. There's a handful that I really like and I'll just sort of circulate and change it up so I don't get too used to the sound of the guided work. I really love, for gratitude work, I really love guided meditation. I like the prompts. I like someone saying, follow the sound of my voice and here's what we're gonna think about and here's what we're gonna focus on because especially in the morning, my mind tends to wander really badly in the morning and I'm just excited and my day's going and maybe I just read something interesting and so if I don't have that guided prompt I tend to kind of wander off course which I don't like so I do a guided gratitude meditation and if you are inside the app or if you are doing last 90 days with us and getting that elevated experience in the rise app there are tons of guided gratitude meditations and I'm releasing a new one every single week during the last 90 days challenge to help you with this practice and we're bringing in some new voices to do it as well it's like really cool but even if you don't have the app go on youtube you guys there's a bajillion guided gratitude meditations that you can do on youtube that are totally free but i pop my earbuds in so i don't wake the kids up and i will just do a meditation that takes about 15 minutes and then i will do my start today journal gratitude work So if you have Start Today Journal, if you've heard me talk about it before, you can listen to episode 72 of the podcast and you can do the practice in whatever notebook you have. You don't have to buy the product, but it's also there if you want it. Uh, But I do my Start Today Journal work, which is writing down pieces of gratitude and then setting my goals for the day. And then, now you know why I need so much time in the morning, and then I journal. So every single morning, Uh, At this point, I get up from my spot on the sofa and I go over to the dining room table and I I just do um, some journal work. I'll typically do two pages, so I'll just open to two fresh pages in my notebook. I just have a moleskin and I will free form of consciousness. I'll just kind of write whatever I'm feeling or thinking, kind of process anything that's going on inside of my heart or maybe in my head. And then I, you want to be really intentional when you are doing doing journal work to not just observe. So this is a really important practice when it comes to manifesting things in our lives is if you're only writing down what is happening, if you're only sort of writing down and observing your life, it's a dangerous habit of sort of accepting what is. 
manifesting says that we have the ability to create our own reality. That's the idea of an abundance or a gratitude practice, which says no matter what's happening in the world around me, I create my reality and I can decide to be a joyful person even when the world's a mess, right? So I, you wanna make sure that you're not just doing the journal work, but that you're also planning ahead, calling your shot, doing some scripting work. If you're familiar with that, if not, you can look it up on YouTube or, you know, send me a note on the hotline or DM me. If that's something that you want me to get into on podcasts, I can walk you through what scripting looks like, but essentially you're writing out the kind of day that you want to have before you get into it. But I script out the day or I script out big moments because I'm setting my intention for what I want to create. So I pull that into morning routine as well. And the whole time I'm really setting the intention for how I want to be. I will put on, you know, I'll have my diffuser going. So I've got some really good smelling essential oils. And I, when it gets closer for the time for the little kids to wake up, I will start to play. I'll just tell Alexa, I'm like, Alexa, play meditation music. And she plays sort of like vibey, cool music. And I start to, it's almost like the house is sort of going through a sunrise, right? Like I, we're sort of slowly waking up. And I think as the mama or the daddy, or even if you're single and you're living by yourself, you're the mama for yourself. We're really setting the pace for the evolution of our family's day. Mm -hmm.